Hey, welcome to 28 millimeter RPG. And uh, this is a video going out to Shauner. Kind of giving him the basics of what's going on with Numenera. And uh, a lot of the stuff that you see on online on YouTube um, featuring Numenera rules kind of gets uh, a little weird because they're talking about uh, cipher system as well and then sometimes about the strange but I just want to focus here on Numenera itself let me just grab my coffee here as uh, I'll need it for because uh, <laughs> I'm gonna be doing quite a bit of talking here so Numenera is a really super easy system for the GM in some ways and I'm going to relate it to Traveler, just for just for Shauner's sake. So he he has an understanding of of Traveler, and uh, and I there's some aspects of Numenera that are really really close to Traveler. So let's get on with this. Now, first off, the dice here. This is the game master doesn't roll any dice. Um, he, he, he can though, if he wants to, but, uh, starting off, um, let me get, bring out another set here. Let, let me break out these dice as well. I have two sets of dice. This is actually my set for, uh, um, for the strange. And this is my Numenera set. So the Numenera set show up a little bit better against the blue backdrop, but they're nice dice, you know? Have some fancy scribblings on them and uh, one of the features of them is uh, and you don't need this on on any kind of you know your your own dice but it's nice to have that highlighted like this 19 here and uh, this uh, 15, 18 and 17 so everything 17 or higher has been highlighted on this dice you could do this to to your own set of dice as well to kind of help you visualize when there's going to be something uh, incredibly uh, awesome that is going to happen with uh, your with your character's action. Uh, this, however, is a one. So whenever you get a one, it is the GM intrusion. What here? Well, the one that is the GM intrusion here. All right. So that, that's a bad thing. Uh, the other one over here, this is a 20, I believe. It must be the 20. Okay. I usually just use normal dice. So normal dice work just, just perfectly fine. So I did, did collect up a set, uh, a couple of sets here so that I had, you know, for my, for my players so they could roll their, you know, sets of Numenera dice. And, um, so that is the main function of this dice. There is never any, um, like there's very rarely that there would be a bonus like plus one or plus two added to this dice, if at all. It, it's, it's always roll, rolled and read as is. Um, that it, it, That's with tasks. Alrighty, so any kind of skill check, task, that sort of thing, that's always done. D20. And uh, your, this is going to be your main dice for everything. The D6 here is important for when you're recovering from your uh, pools. You have three stats. One is might. One is speed. One is <clears throat> intellect. And uh, just like Traveler, they get damaged. So um, Traveler, it's, it's more or less the... Uh, uh, strength, endurance, and dexterity that get damaged. Same thing happens in Numenera. So, uh, as combined, it is your health pool. 
And it is also your exhaustion pool because when you do extraordinary things and try to force something, you become exhausted. So you, you start losing points in your in your pool. So forcing or you know adding effort to a role that would uh, that would uh, cause uh, damage on your intellect like you know you're exhausting your your mind you're exhausting your your reflexes you're exhausting your your strength so that's that's vital to to uh, for your p players to know because they're going to be having to keep track of uh, how they're being exhausted so um, the D uh, six here is meant to recover any of that damage so you get four of these rolls per day basically and uh, depending if you if you're gonna use the uh, the recovery the first time it's instantaneous so you just kind of uh, you know sit back your character sits back and and uh, get, catches his breath the second time they use it during the day it's gonna take them ten minutes of rest time so it's a little bit lengthier and then the next time they do it it is going to take um, one hour so and then uh, finally the last one it ha has a, a 10 hour rest period in order for you to roll this d6 again so you can uh, players can alleviate like leave that for the very very end of the of the day and do all four rolls if they want to or you know throughout the game they can also just um, roll intermittently during the game session. However, with a party, uh, that ten minutes uh, won't be too inconvenient or that uh, that moment to uh, to rest. But uh, when you get to the hour and the 10 hour, then you've got to start planning with the rest of the players on uh, what they're doing at that time. Uh, because your player is going to be out of commission basically for, you know, that hour or 10 hours in order to rest up. And you're probably going, well, that 10 hours, that's a that's a long period of time for the end of the day. Um, well, Numenera, the world of Numenera is a, uh, it's, it's, it's got a longer uh, time period for, for the day. So it's not 24 hours, it's, it's a lot longer than that. So your day and, and night cycles are... are quite a bit longer so you know, to, to do all four rolls overnight perfect will work anyways with the dice out of the way um the game master uh well actually we'll, we'll add these two in here the game master basically rolls these two if you're not using the cards so i use cards so i never have to touch the dice some game masters may want to just Play, play with the dice. That's that's cool. So, then there's there's a reason for this, and it's a reason why this book is so thick. Uh, well, there's two of these books. This one is on the first three sets of characters, and it's basically about um, the the game in general, how to play it, and some of the interesting things that you can create in this as a game master, and it gives you a scenario or two in here as well. But there's a second book, and it's called, this one's called Discovery. The other one is called Destiny, and it's more about building a foundation. Uh, it introduces three more characters, which are more, you know, homebodies. Uh, but, uh, you know, like, uh, but they're not, <laughs> they're, one's a, 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 a right, which is a uh, character that builds things. Uh, the other one's an Ar Arcus, which is a leader type character so it's it can be a more of an explorer too uh, as well um the uh other one is a delve which is more of the uh character that goes into ruins and and uh, seeks out things um and uh and such i've seen uh Shonder's latest video on uh with uh, talking about the group from the infinite construct and claire 
Uh, Claire actually is uh, pretty good at explaining a lot of stuff and has some really good insight on Numenera as, uh, as he, she, I, I no, no, as, uh, as they understand it. <laughs> but, uh, um, good information. So I, I always find it interesting to listen to, uh, Claire's insight on, uh, on using the cipher system in general. So. The um, the book here uh, is very thick. Like this, this one book is a huge tome of information. The game master's uh, mechanics is a very, very, very small section on this. This is mostly player player um, options. And stuff. Most of the complexity in this game is player options. That is it. This this entire book is pretty much player options, and then there's a scenario in the back here and some explanations. Lots of charts and stuff like that, or tables to roll on uh, for the game master if the game master doesn't have the cards, and uh, which makes interesting situations happen and uh, or creates interesting items. So, um, and one of the things that Shauner was kind of talking about in, in that, on his video on, on the, uh, on the group, uh, gameplay was that, uh, <clears throat> he was saying that, oh, well, all, he, these characters, they just go delving into, uh, ruins and, and finding things like, um, toilet handles or something like that. Um, <laughs> you... That's that's a very kind of narrow aspect kind of look at it <laughs> because in in my games I have antagonists and there's you know there's bands of marauders in slave caravans and uh you know going on these big mad max uh kind of uh road warrior uh expeditions across the uh across the world and they're like uh, terrorizing everyone, and it, so I've got lots of bad guys and good guys, and and uh, horrible things happening in in my Numenera game to make things super interesting, because I'm I'm not the type of guy that that likes to have you know the theme park, um, Seattle, <laughs> represented in in my in my games i want uh struggles i want uh you know some some reason for the characters to want to fight you know the the evil that is is going on and i i want to have the evil evil represented you know in the game that is you know needs to be stopped not just uh oh they, they, we have to understand them no no these these guys are are you know can be pretty horrifying so and uh, a lot of the creatures in here are exactly that rather horrifying so um and uh, lovecraftian in 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 a sense <clears throat> so let's get into the um now that i've explained the dice roll and this kind of what this big thick book is let's get into the really really simple stuff which is the rules and I mean it. The rules are basically very simple. I have here a, uh, a basic. Um, this is the game master screen, basically. Just kind of, kind of this. Th this is it. So here we have our task difficulty. Now, uh, Sean, you've seen this, and you mentioned, hey, is there like a, a description of this task difficulty of 0 to 10? Uh, 0 being the easiest, 10 being the hardest. Yes, there is. Uh, over here, you can describe each one as being routine, simple, standard, demanding, difficult, challenging, intimidating, formidable, heroic, immortal, and impossible. The way this translates is into a die roll at the end here. And that die roll is represented over here. So as a basic calculation for, uh, for you to kind of understand this, it's this number times 3. So 1 times 3 is 3, 2 times 3 is 6, 
3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 4, 12. So it, it keeps on going up. And you can see that soon enough, something like 7 here, a task level 7, is going to be formidable and rather impossible to get unless there is some sort of skill or some sort of item or some sort of cipher or some sort of uh, effort put into bringing this task difficulty level down not the target number the task difficulty down so that is how that is all read this, this is the only chart you need as the game master to uh, basically run your game that's it the rest of this is kind of you know um, you you just end up understanding armor types light medium heavy basically will uh, there's a cost but this is all kind of player base that worries about that all you know is that light armor protects you by one point Medium armor protects you by two points. Heavy armor protects you by three points. Weapon damage. Weapons are light, medium, or heavy. They can be any anything. You can even have super heavy weapons or something like that if you want. And make them eight points if you want. Um, it's entirely up to you. You're the game master. This is your world. It's, it's how you build it. Light weapons do two points of damage. Medium weapons do four. And heavy weapons do six points of damage. Now... When players roll the dice and get these extra special uh, from 17 onwards, then there is extra damage added at an extra one point, extra two points, extra four points, that sort of stuff. And there's also extra effects added to it as well. And the players in, in, in Numenera, and this is entirely up to you as a game master, uh, you can give them the ability to uh, make their player intrusion happen, which can be an effect that they use uh, depending on their character. Uh, if, if they're, uh, say, for example, a character that uses fire, which I will show you here, uh, they could uh, cause somebody to burst into flames or something like that. That could be their, their thing. Or maybe they could pull the error out from, uh, from a... Uh, an enemy and stun them or something like that with that you know I have them kind of held aback by the uh, uh, the non-presence of oxygen around their uh, around their head or something something to that matter it's whatever the players want uh, but it has to kind of coincide with how the character is built and, uh, and it's got to make sense in in that kind of way right it could be, you know, if it's if it's da if you're damaging something, that's that's fairly explainable. If you are trying to unlock something or break down a door or something like that, I mean, added effects, you know, you can you can kind of try to think of something like that. Um, for uh, the players can think of something like that. However, if the players roll a one, and this is the basic mechanic of the game. If they roll the one, where's the one? One, uh, a situation happens where the game master has his intrusion. And uh, I, I use cards in this case. There's a, ga a game master intrusions for, car uh, for uh, combat situations. There's ones for just general situations. There's uh, other ones for... Um, it, it, it covers a lot of situations, so it, it's not only combat, it's when it, whenever they're rolling for, say, you know, a task at hand or something, there could be a, a group of enemies that show up, or, um, something, something bad happens in the, uh, in the surroundings, so it's an environmental issue or something that happens around them. It could be anything that you wish as a game master to make things interesting. And uh, using the cards really helps prompt kind of the idea. Sometimes I don't use what's exactly on the card, but it prompts an idea in my head to use kind of a variant of it in, in a sense, the same sort of effect, but uh, caused by something different than what is described on the card. So that is a thing. Um, <clears throat> now, to get... This task task difficulty reduced. 
I said, you're going to need basically uh, a sacrifice from your pools if you want to apply effort. And uh, when you, you have your uh, character, and I'll use this character over here as an example. This is really elaborate, but I will explain this. There are way more simpler um, uh, character sheets, which I am going to show you how, to, how it's uh, basically simpler than what that looks like. That's a piece of artwork that, uh, that can uh, be distracting. Uh, <laughs> but pools using a sacrifice of some points in order to prompt that uh, alleviation of the target number by one, that can be done. Eff that's called effort. So every time you're using effort, you, uh, you're taking away three points unless you have some edge in that particular statistic uh, uh, attribute. And I will show you how that works. Assets, assets can be uh, anything like a tool or a, uh, another character or somebody else who's trained in doing uh, such tasks that you are trying to achieve that assists you in the uh, process. So that lowers that task by one as well. And skills, if you have a, uh, a trained skill, it lowers it by one. If you have a uh, specialized skill, it lowers it by two, and uh, and so on. So that uh, formidable uh, task at seven can be lowered pretty much by two or three notches down to something like a difficulty four, which is a 12 or higher that you roll on the D12. So that can be alleviated that way and uh yeah that that's basically all you need uh, uh, for the game master screen so just to kind of give you um that aspect here so here is our character sheet and i'm going to explain this character sheet because it can be much simpler than what this looks like, okay? So on this sheet, this one's designed very kind of weirdly. Um, and everything has been created on here by just simply from the care from the player picking from some aspects of their of their character uh, um, creation. So they got their basic name. This, uh, you know, so whatever. Um, this character is a, and then you have a descriptor. And this descriptor here will have um, numerous things attached to it in that book, in that big thick volume. It will give you options for different kinds of uh, effects, uh, abilities, uh, skills, that sort of stuff that come with honorable. So this is an honorable glaive. Glaive is the uh, character class, basically. Glaive is like a fighter. So you have a glaive, you have a jack in that in that one book, and you have the nano. So um, the jack is pretty much kind of the jack of all trades, or maybe a thief kind of ish character, or well, not really. But Delve is more of the thief character in the second book. But uh, it can be that kind of function as well. Nano is more of the scientist, uh, uh, researcher, um, wizard kind of guy. So that would be uh, those other classes. So the triad is represented here. And uh, depending on what the player picks, uh, a glaive can do some functions where, you know, it, it can heal or whatever, you know, or, you know, do some things that a nano can do or a jack can do. Or, you know, it, it all depends on what they pick for the next part, which is the focus. And the focus here is bears a halo of fire. And there's all kinds of different ones that you can pick. But like I say, that that big thick book here is is this is what this this book is all about it's all those options and uh and it's it's pretty massive so that that book yeah it's all character creation basically a good 75 percent of it so 
out of these this focus will come different abilities and stuff and this is described over on the other side of the sheet i i i did this on a on a, two two pages but this is supposed to be actually one sheet uh a background this is pretty pretty simple and uh should be shauner uh acceptable uh because it's pretty short uh it just explains pretty much what exactly like a traveler character uh it gives you uh some prompts as you're creating this character from honorable and uh and bears a halo fire it'll give you some prompts on how you're connected with other characters and what kind of uh, connections you will have as well and uh your basic skills and abilities and all that stuff so uh here he's got some uh uh, some connections and or some reasons for why he is called something uh, it's uh, yeah, anyways uh, so we'll get to this page here this is kind of a big rambly mess but uh, fairly easily decipherable because of the layout is uh, but I would I would just use like a piece of graph paper with all of all your information instead uh, so it's laid out easier and not so distracting but basically here you have your might your speed and your intellect okay so your three attributes in this case this character's uh, might is 16 the speed is 10 and intellect is 10 these numbers are just uh, basically the the hit points that this character has just like traveler if you reduce one of these like the 16 to 0 then the character is impaired oh yeah impaired so impaired is written here if this a second attribute is also brought down to 0 leaving only one with uh, some points remaining then the character is debilitated so that's this is the damage so there you go that's uh, easy, easy to uh, interpret. Um, alongside here, there's also an edge skill as well. An edge for might, an edge for speed, and an edge in intellect. In this case, it's uh, he's a fighter type. So might has an edge of one. Speed has an edge of one. And the reason why this is important is because of the calculation for effort. So, in other words, for a character to use some effort in order to lower the task by one, then you need to expend three points. If it's something physical, you're going to be taking three points off of might. If it's something that you need reflexes in, you're going to be taking three points off of your speed. If it's something that you have to discern with your mind... Or you maybe you're using defense against something, you know, like you know, uh, some sort of charm or some mind-altering kind of thing. Uh, you will expend three points on your intellect, and that is reduced by the edge. So instead of spending three points, you're spending two points whenever you're using that, as well as you know, uh, for your speed and everything. Right? So it makes makes everything cool that way. Um, special abilities will also reduce things as well. Some will, in this case, a danger sense will take away one speed. Uh, Pierce will take away one speed as well. And uh, the explanation is there. Uh, Pierce does uh, plus one damage to a long range attack with a sharp point. So something like uh, throwing a dagger or something like that will. And you, if you want to sacrifice one, one speed off of off of your pool then that damage is going to cause an extra point um shroud of flame that'll be using one intellect and uh that will create uh some sort of damaging effect and all that stuff uh other things are like they're kind of like their transient skills like practice and armor so this is kind of like uh their you know the proficiencies you know, in uh D, D and then up here you have skills Yes, this is just like Traveler almost. You do have skills. So in case this is only a tier 1 character, a first level character. Okay, tier 1. So it's kind of limited on how many skills they have. But uh, every time they advance uh, through their first tier, 
they will gain a, a, a skill or they will gain something in an ability or something or they will gain uh, some points to add to their uh, pools uh, permanently or they will be able to extrude another point of effort onto their uh, on, on their uh, on their situation so they could change that effort from one to two so that means they instead of just using one level of effort per activity that per task you can use two levels so which costs more points but there again you can you can bring down the uh, the um, the level a little bit more efficiently for uh, the task difficulty so pretty straightforward damage uh, for, for the two items that this character has is a bow and a dagger damage is four damage here is two the dagger has a minus one because there is a mo the character took something that uh, uh, gives the task resolution a minus one in it so which means it's it's easier so instead of the character attacking a creature that's level five and uh, it would be like attacking a creature that's only level four so instead of needing a 15 it only needs a 12 when he's attacking with the dagger okay so that's what that means um the equipment pretty standard uh, you know these are just standard equipment spoiler pack uh, bow dagger ornate claw coat with uh from your military days clothing fairly simple these are ciphers ciphers are <coughs> random things here's a cipher card this is for me to pull up for making treasure and stuff like that or things that are, are found <coughs> in this case it's a vocal translator or maybe it's a sneaking enhancement and i can i as a game master i can make this vocal translator i can make it into a pill or i could make it into a mask or I can make it into a uh, uh, maybe an attachment that goes onto your throat for for a moment, or it could be a creature that attaches to your throat and talks for you, or something like that, uh, or or whatever. <laughs> it, or it could be something that you stick in your ear, you know, like an earworm or something like that. Or it could be an electronic device that sticks into your ear and and works for what it says here, twenty eight hours. So. Um, it's up to you as a game master. How you want to portray your new Monero world is how you will. And the weirder you get, uh, cool. You know, that's what that's what new Monero is all about. It's it's supposed to be weird. Uh, sneaking enhancement. You could use that. Um, sneaking uh, adds to uh, uh, gives you a better sneak. So you could imagine this as being maybe some. Uh, something like soles that go into your shoes maybe it can be like uh, some sort of a cloak maybe it can be a, a pill that you take that uh, makes you quieter maybe it's it, it could be all kinds of different things you, you just have to use your imagination uh, cell disrupting ray emitter now this is interesting wow so this one will uh yeah create some destructive enemy uh, and, uh yeah, energy so uh um and depending on the level, that'll give you a, a more an idea of what kind of uh, damage you can do. So uh, damage equal to the Cypher's level. So th these these cards are awesome because otherwise I would have to be pulling out the D100 and rolling on a bunch of uh, tables for this kind of stuff. And that's why I like the cards. Makes things simpler. So the basic character sheet is fairly easily laid out here. And down here, uh, you have recovery rolls, so action, one action, 10 minutes, one hour, uh, 10 hours. That's, and every time they, they do uh, one of those, they kind of check it off as, as they go on throughout the day. Uh, the skills here are laid out as per intellect, as per speed, as per might. And you could make your own character sheet and just put uh, S, P, and I as the uh, for might speed and intellect <coughs> denoting where that that skill comes from so and the book is full of these kind of skills and it even prompts you to make up your own depending on your uh, uh, what kind of a um, fluff you have going on in the background for your game 
So easy. So this, yeah, decorative piece of artwork isn't as hard as uh, it looks. It just looks a, a little weird. I, like I say, I would prefer just having a regular um, graph paper sheet and just write down everything on there. Um, it makes it a lot easier to interpret without all this rambly kind of drawing mess and, and stuff. But I, at the same time, it's kind of cool looking, you know. It's got skulls and everything, a, a potion thing over here. And interesting. Anyways. So, the only other thing I have to talk about is why, as a game master, this is an easy game to uh, present to your players. Because the game master has all this free time, instead of rolling dice and everything, um, has a lot of free time just uh, trying to figure things out as the players are going along. So you can freeform this game all the way through and uh, draw cards and create a situation if you want on the fly. Uh, creatures. Creatures are weird and uh, and wonderful. So they're... Here, let's, let's add some light onto here a little bit more. So this... Uh, these creatures are uh, just extremely bizarre. There's a lot of, you know, interesting uh, aspects about them. And having pictures of each of them makes things a little more clearer on what the situation is at hand in front of the players. And uh, there's, uh, there's, I have tons of these cards. Now, you could just go through the... Uh, um, the here i'll grab a bestiary here so this is a uh, one of three books so i have three bestiaries here and these are fairly extensive they have lots of charts on when where you're going to find these creatures lots of pictures and uh descriptions most of this information is like you know interesting ways that they would interact in say in combat and stuff like that so it gives you kind of a good uh feel of the character uh creature or whatever on how they interact in the world it gives you some prompts on the side where you would find these things what what kind of intrusions you could imply here uh to give you some ideas but uh yeah these uh that's the extensive version of it these cards have kind of like the broken down easy version of the uh, of the description on the back here. So some of them are super, super simple, like this one here. This is kind of like a uh, more or less a level tier level one kind of adversary kind of thing. So this uh, walking fish head uh, humanoid with uh, some sort of weird staff here or spear or something uh, is very easy to interpret on this card. So the creature challenge rating is two, which is actually six on the die roll. So this does the uh, translation here from your uh, difficulty to the target number. Okay, so it does that for you. The uh, basics are here. Its health is six, its damage inflicted is four points, its armor is one, so it takes away one point of damage against any kind of physical attack towards it. Its movement is short, very easy descriptor. Modif uh, modifications, it will have skills of animal husbandry, stealth, and understanding Numenera as level three, so it's pretty skilled at that. And combat, uh, they use spears and bows. So that's the reason for the damage is four, because bows and spears do four points of damage. Fairly easy to interpret. So anything else you wish to add to this character, you know, is up to you. You can look it up on, on the book, like, beforehand, and have, like, a, st a stack of these, like, picked out. Uh, these are going to be the creatures that these characters are going to be encountering. And then uh, kind of give a little study up on some of the more... Um, extensive ones so you can understand how you're going to present them in the game so it, it lends itself easily that way um, 
as far as combat goes, uh, characters roll all the dice. So when a character, say for example, that uh, character sheet that I had over there, the uh, glaive gets into combat with this thing. Uh, for the for the player to attack it, it's going to be at level two. So the character needs to roll a six or higher without any effort put towards it. It's going to be fairly easy to hit this thing. But it also has a minus one on the armor. So that character that I showed you before uses a bow and a, a, a dagger. Well, it's going to be uh, only one point of damage with that dagger if it hits. And unless the uh, unless the roll is is much higher, like an uh, like an 18 or something, then you get bonus damage and, and an effect as well, uh, a small effect. So um, the uh, the damage, you know, uh, uh, fairly easy to to use during the the game. It's 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 nothing hard. You're not rolling dice for damage, so you're cutting out all that uh, BS in the game. And uh, the simplification of, of all this. Now, uh, a defense. Now, if, say, the creature's attacking the player. Now, depending on the, on the descriptor here, sometimes the defense number will be different than this uh, creature rating here. So it could be bit, uh, greater or could be smaller. It depends on, the, on, the, on how the creature is set up. If it's, if it's meant for more defense like it's built for more defense than attack then then that's going to happen you're going to find that in automatons and stuff like that some of them are just geared that way so in this case it's rather simple same again a two so the uh, uh the two is going to be the attack factor on this creature uh or the defense that the player has to has to go through in order to avoid the four points of damage so the player rolls it needs a six or higher, as in basically uh, from a from a task difficulty two like this needs a six or higher, like it says on the on the card here, in order to avoid damage. Very easy. So if the player rolls and gets a sixteen, yay, uh, ends up avoiding the attack, you know, kind of idea. Uh, but of course, you know, use your own imagination and uh, descriptions upon that. I'm just trying to make it as simple as possible by telling you the mechanics here. That is basically the mechanics in short. Um, other additional things like ambient damage. So you have like fire or plasma or some sort of cloud of gas or something like that. That's going to, uh, you know, not be affected by some armors. So some armors will say it will be more effective against, you know, lasers and energy and stuff like that. And you know you can you can make your own stuff. Uh, it's very easy to make your own things uh, fairly popular in the in, in this game. Like for instance, like uh, um, some of the ciphers in here, you can have as a typical item of like a torch. You can make uh, uh, some sort of uh, a torch uh, cipher that is uh, kind of one shot and lasts for uh, a couple of hours or whatever it is. It has a battery life and then it's thrown away, basically. And that can be a regular item that is found in the shops or whatever, it, you know, whatever uh, um, uh, homestead or, 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 or town or whatever that these characters come from. So. Uh, purchasing more of these things becomes fairly easy to do. Um, you know, you could, you could, maybe, maybe four screen projectors are, are popular uh, as according to this card here. And you could have that as a regular item in the shop or whatever. Or smoke bombs. Smoke bombs, yeah, they make smoke bombs here. Uh, let's, let's grab a few. They could be useful in some sort of uh, situations. So, um, a lot of this stuff you'll have to kind of uh, prepare in kind of that kind of aspect or jot it down so that it, you, you can use it again later on in the game. Like if the game continues on for another session or two or, or ten, uh, players will be coming back and purchasing more smoke bombs or, uh, or whatever. Um, stims. Stims are also, you know, uh, something like a healing... Uh, thing 
or whatever. Uh, um, you know, this translates very well to a science fiction game as well. And there is a science fiction version of, of this uh, cipher system as well called uh, Stars Are On Fire or something like that. And uh, it was free with the uh, Numenera Humble Bundle as well. So when I started, I got the Humble Bundle version. And uh, yeah, it had pretty much all the books included for um, Numenera, except for a few newer ones, which I did pick up. Because uh, this game seemed super interesting and had a lot of potential to veer out into science fiction, which I love to play. And, um, yeah, it's it's just a good all-round system. Not just a game, it's a system that you could use for everything. And it's very translatable from Traveler to uh, Numenera or from... Numenera to uh, The Strange, which is also on another one of the Monty Cook games, which is more related to uh, Elric of um, Melanibon or whatever, uh, you know, Nimide or whatever the name is that you, <laughs> you call that world. Uh, or, you know, the Eternal Champion series, you know, with Quorum and all that. Uh, or Cornelius Chronicles, that sort of thing. That's kind of what The Strange is all about. Um, you know, trans transferring from uh, one dimension to another, but instead of being uh, who you are in this dimension, you are, instead of being, yeah, uh, the kid in one dimension, you are Den from uh, Heavy Metal, and uh, you're running around with, uh, with your loincloth or less. And with big muscles and uh, and doing heroic, heroic deeds or whatever. Uh, where back back at, on Earth, you're just a, a kid who's like 10 years old and, and reads heavy metal magazines. So, now that my coffee is dwindling away, I think I've said everything that I could say about this game. Um, but uh, cards, cards make things easier. The card sets are uh, accessible. You can download them and have them made uh, for, uh, like I've actually got here. I'll show you some that I've actually had a friend make for me. And uh, where are they here? So I ended up downloading, uh, well, get, uh, getting the uh, drive through RPG. Uh, PDF and I had a friend of mine you know create these cards for me so he's he ends he ends up in a shop that uh, does printing and stuff like that and he decided hey I can print these up for you so he sent them to me they had sharp corners so I just took a corner rounder kind of like uh, this sort of thing this is corner rounder and uh, I rounded the corners of, of them so and which and there's little bits of stuff that come on the corner rounder machine. Um, so I rounded the corners on on them, and they are perfectly playable cards. You know, they they're shiny. They've got the same sort of you know material as this. Actually, these are a little bit more thicker, so they're more durable. But uh, these are these are salvage uh, results for different things. So. Um, in, in in the further game of this, uh, in Numenera, you salvage stuff and you build things for your community. So it's got that in there as well, if you want that. This is all optional, entirely optional. You could have these characters doing, you know, typical traveler kind of things if you wanted. Traveling from star to star, encountering these weirdo things and, uh, you know, creatures and stuff like that. And... Uh, you know, you could be creating all this stuff, uh, this crazy technology from, you know, ancient aliens and stuff, or current aliens that have this stuff typically at, at uh, beck and call, uh, wherever they live. So, all this stuff um, lends to a game that you can mold into anything that you want. You can make any kind of creature. They're very easy to create a uh, stat for uh, for some 
uh, entity, monster, personality. Uh, it, it's 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 easy. It's a very easy game. So there's uh, not much more that I can say that is uh, like there's some situations in the in the book which kind of explain like chases and stuff like that. So you can use those rules or you can make them as simple as you want. It's a toolkit. I always look at these games as toolkit. I'm sure, Sean, you do too as in Traveler. You don't exactly take every rule at, at, its, at its rules as written, but you take the flavor of it and uh, go with it. That's what I do with Numenera. And uh, I have a good time with it. My players have a good time with it. They they enjoy the weirdness of it, and uh, and they they pretty much come up with their own conclusions of what's happening. And I sometimes I just go along with it, or I go along with it with a twist, or something like that. Because um, a lot of times I don't have everything planned, and they go on a tangent, going somewhere that I wasn't expecting them to go, and it's fine because I can just grab something and make something interesting happen in a particular spot and uh and a reason for it to be particularly there and uh it it, it all it all works i i enjoy doing this playing this game uh as a as a game master because uh like i say it's so easy for me to uh, just churn stuff out and it's helped me a lot in my other games too like traveler and stuff uh, just having to come up with stuff on the fly and uh, in working with whatever whim the players are going with especially on the tabletop kind of sense because tabletop frees you from a virtual tabletop and uh, you don't have to have as much prep done uh, when it's on tabletop where uh, virtual, you pretty much have to have a few things kind of ready to uh, slide onto uh, the pre presentation of, of what, what's happening uh, a lot of time. Unless your characters, your players are expecting to be a lot more freeform uh, and just going with more theater of the mind. So, and that works too. Alrighty, well, hopefully that helps. And explaining things for you, Shauner. Any kind of questions, put them down below in the comments. I will answer them.